organizer, I think, oops, sorry. So thank you uh, uh, all, uh, thank, thank organizers uh, for inviting me to, uh, to give a talk here. Okay, today I'm, I'm gonna uh, talk about the majority dynamics on sparse random graph, actually only sparse random graphs. Uh, so you will see the reason uh, later. So this is joint work with Dev, Eb, and Junggyung, and Tuan. So I'm in here in Seoul. So, so I will I will define majority <coughs> majority dynamics on on a graph. So given graph G and <coughs> initial opinion S zero of all the vertices. I will say sometimes my sometimes one and minus one or a red and blue. One means red and minus one means blue too. So here, here is an example. So opinion of A, initially the opinion of A is one or red and opinion of B is minus one or blue something like that. So we can, the so opinion of C is minus one and O of blue, something like that. So we can define. The dynamic is this. So initial opinion, just uh, in, in the previous slide, uh, there is initial opinion, one or minus one or uh, uh, red or blue. So opinion after day one is, uh, defined by S1, which is uh, determined by this formula. It's just uh, taking majority of uh, neighborhood, each neighborhood. So we just uh, formally it's a signature of sum of signs, which is majority, of course. So this, we can define this only if uh, this sum is not zero. If, if the sum is zero, uh, we just uh, say that uh, opinion of, of B uh, remains the same as before. So uh, using this, this is just for tie break. So we can define. So this is majority dynamic on a graph. So here is an example. Initially we have these four opinions and then uh, opinion of A after day one is signature of some of these, which is minus two. And so uh, opinion of A after day one is minus one. And same thing for B, uh, for B minus one, 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 and majority is one, or uh, some is also one. So majority is one. So, opinion of B after one day is equal to one. Same thing, so C for, for C, uh, it tied. So the, there is one minus one and one one. So it tied, so it remains the same. And for D, we have just one neighborhood and so take signature of minus one, which is minus one, something like that. So this is uh, 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 an example of major, major dynamics on this graph. In general, the, uh, the opinion of V after, after day T is signature of, of majority of each neighborhood in, in the previous day. So, we, so we can, you can just e easily define using induction and same thing here. So this is the, the majority dynamics. And roughly speaking, uh, di the dynamic is this. The opinion of B after uh, day T is, is basically a signature of sum of uh, neighborhood, sum of uh, opinions of neighborhood of B in the pre previous day. So here I, I just ignored, uh, to, to make it short, uh, I ignored the, the tie breaking. So I didn't define tie breaking, but I 
formally, so for the tie breaking is this, but uh, typically just, just saying very roughly, uh, just roughly, uh, we can just define the dynamic using this formula. Here, chi is a characteristic function, one or minus one. If this were true, it's one, otherwise minus one, of course. Okay, so we are gonna uh, think about uh, majority dynamics of random graph on random graph. So again, uh, we have the same thing here, but G, our graph G is random graph G and P with P, and P times N goes to infinite. And so we have initial opinion, opinions here. So we are uh, studying on, we are gonna study a, a majority dynamic on this, this setting. So here is just a, a simple definition. So R0 is the set of uh, red vertices or uh, the vertices uh, of uh, red opinion, something like that. B0 is, is uh, the set of blue vertices. Initially, so there is a nice conjecture of Tran and Bu. If there is initially, if if there is more red uh, than blue initially, then with probability, probability, oops, probability, oops, what happened? Probability more than half, substantially more than half, or all opinion, all vertices will be red eventually, actually after finite days. That's uh, their conjecture. So uh, once uh, there are more, or more red than um, blue, then uh, with probability greater than half, substantially uh, greater than half, everything becomes red is their conjecture. And many people worked on that problem, uh, especially, I mean, I'm here, I forgot to say because I, I, mix, I was mixed. So I'm thinking about uh, G and HEP, not, not G and P in general. So we, on, if we consider measuring dynamic on G and HEP, uh, the trend and book conjecture this. For G and half, uh, many people worked on these problems and there are very nice uh, results, but I'm not gonna uh, talk about it because uh, on, on Wednesday, uh, this is at each time. So on Wednesday, somebody else, uh, the nice professor, Ban Bu, will uh, talk about this, I'm pretty sure. So it's just, this is just pre preview and uh, I'm not, I don't wanna kill your suspense. So you can, you can wait until Wednesday to see what, uh, what are the nice results on, on this problem. In this talk, uh, I'm, I'm considering majority dynamic on G and P, especially when P is very small. <coughs> So how small it is, is I'm, I will talk about the, the uh, uh, how, talk about how, how small this P is. So again, the same thing, we have random graph and initial opinion, red and blue, and we have blue, initial blue, initial red vertices, initial, initially uh, blue vertices. Here is conjecture, conjecture, Actually, this one was earlier conjecture than uh, Tren and Bu. So, so this is conjecture of Benjamini, Chen, O'Donnell, and the Thomas. And oh, I don't see this uh, this part. So sorry about that. Anyway, so. Uh, now, uh, initial opinion is sampled uniformly at random. So it's, it's equally likely to be one or minus one, uh, or you can say red or blue. 
So uh, there are, uh, uh, I mean, so S0 is sampled uniformly and random. And so uh, with, uh, with the same probability. Then uh, with probability one minus epsilon, almost all vertices are, are red or blue at the finite days. So uh, this is the uh, uh, conjecture. So for any epsilon, uh, if S0 is sampled uniformly at random, then uh, either one, one in, in after finite days. So this was the conjecture I mentioned. And uh, found to found to lie Kiss and Kang and Makai Kang and Makai proved this uh, this conjecture for P is uh, bigger than n to the minus half up to constant factor. And so we and uh, Dev and Ju myself and Junggyung and Tuan uh, improved this result of, uh, for this value of P. P. Of course, uh, this is a little bit smaller than this number. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna uh, give you some idea of this proof. Uh, both, both proofs. And of course, this is not, not a proof at all. It's just love idea. And so I will give uh, some idea uh, uh, about how to prove these two results. So again, the same con conjecture. So I'm gonna uh, uh, prove the, uh, uh, the previous one, the first one. So for this, this P, uh, we observe that and if S0 is sampled uniformly at random, then we observe that uh, the difference between number of red vertices uh, and a number of blue vertices is order n to the one half. This is just natural, so this is just standard deviation of uh, uh, this sample, Uni uniformly random, and there are n vertices, then the discrepancy between red and blues uh, uh, is uh, all the entity one half. That we can, we can, uh, we, we can use. So again, so our dynamic is something like this, not exactly, but uh, very close to this. So uh, our dynamic is just characteristic function minus one, one minus one, depending on signature of this one. So we, we because we, uh, the difference between number of blues and red is order n to the one half. We will consider just typical case, uh, which case is the, the difference is exactly n to the one half. Here we, I assumed n to the one half is an integer, of course. So for this case, we are, are working on this dynamic. Uh, for S1 is signature of this, uh, sum conditioned on uh, this one. Red, there are uh, uh, n to the one half more red than uh, blues, like this. But if we consider this carefully, then this dynamic is very similar to this dynamic. So now the, he, this part is not zero. This part is uh, minus p times n to the half. Condition, the condition has been changed. Uh, now they are balanced. No, no, uh, blue and red are balanced. There are the equal number of blues and uh, red here. Conditioned on, on this balanced one, uh, we just change uh, uh, this low bound. 
this is possible because this is similar because there are entry one have extra red vertices and each vertex v is connected to uh, these extra red vertex red vertex uh, number of uh, the number of extra red vertex which is adjacent to b is uh, is p times entity one half in expectation so uh, we may change this dynamic to this dynamic conditioned on uh, balanced uh, the numbers are balanced so we can change this one so once we, we we may be able to change the the uh, dynamics uh, like this, then uh, under this rule, uh, probability as one as one of b is equal to one is slightly more than half, because this one this one is more than more than as uh, sum of plus minus one random variable, uh, which can be can be plus or minus one equally likely. So this is just more than a binomial uh, uh, things. So uh, with this binomial thing, uh, uh, because low bound is not zero, uh, there are uh, extra probability like this. Again, this denominator is standard deviation of this one. So standard uh, to this, uh, this bias divided by standard deviation becomes will be a, the probability. Here, here I don't mind the constant. The, the, there are constant, constant, uh, constant here and here are, are different in general. Uh, I the, the, the same here same, but I don't mind uh, the constant here. So. Uh, with this probe, uh, if this this were true, then uh, in expectation there are uh, uh, because there are n vertices here, so uh, because and it, the probability is uh, not exactly half, but uh, half plus this amount. So uh, in expectation there are these many more red vertices after the one. So this is quite big if p is constant, it's order n. So we, we can get something very good. Then uh, because we have this, uh, then it, it is enough to show that the variance is small enough, namely a variance is small, much smaller than uh, p times n, n squared. So that standard deviation becomes uh, much smaller than this. Then if we see that, then there are, uh, after day one, there are sub substantially more red vertices than uh, blue vertices. Then uh, after day two, uh, red dominates uh, uh, blue, etc. So within finite, finite days, uh, everything becomes uh, blue. I am mean, everything become red. I mean. So main task of this, this uh, uh, problem is to, to estimate the variance. So to show variance is small you know. As I said, it's, this is not uh, easy, uh, but uh, these people, uh, uh, these, these people, Manage to to uh, estimate the variance nicely, and they were uh, they were able to prove if p is bigger than this number, uh, constant times n to the minus one half, then uh, variance is small enough, and so uh, we can uh, red dominate uh, for for this case, the red dominate after after few days eventually become so all, all vertices become red. So this is the uh, proof way to, to prove this one. So now uh, I'm, I'm, um, I'm gonna talk about the second, 
theorem of Dev, uh, Junyoung, and Tuan, and myself. So again, the, the theorem is I just uh, we just reduce to the low bound of, of p here in uh, before it's a to the n to the minus one half. Now we have uh, a times n to the minus one uh, three fifths log n. Of course, the, the this a is different from the, it's not the same as previous theorem. I just recycled the, the notation. A. So uh, in, in the previous theorem, we used this fact, the discrepancy between uh, initial red and blue is order n to the one half. So, and we, we got uh, this kind of things. After changing dynamics a little bit, uh, we, we got probability as one, v is equal to one is slightly more than half. And this makes a uh, difference. We are, we are gonna use both of them. So here is uh, a more details, but not co complete details. So uh, the same thing, uh, if uh, there are n to the half, uh, square root to n more red than blue, then we can consider uh, uh, this, this dynamic is very similar to this, as I said before. Now, uh, as probability as one w is equal to one is slightly more than half, uh, for S2, S2 means uh, after second day, uh, uh, the dynamic, this dynamic for S2 becomes something like this, conditioned on balanced. So what the reason is the following, there are uh, P times in expectation, there are P times N neighborhood of V, but each is uh, red with probability this. So we have some gain p to the one half. So uh, uh, because of this one, uh, this dynamic, this usual dynamic becomes uh, uh, this low bound change to this one uh, after, this, uh, after uh, day two. Of course, this number is bigger than this number when, when p is less than, uh, P is le much less than n to the minus half. Okay. So uh, because, because uh, they prove that uh, this range we are considering um, only the case, case P is much smaller than n to the minus uh, one half and bigger than this number though. So we can change dynamics like this. Then same thing. So once we, we, we are able to change this dyna, uh, the, the dynamics to, uh, to this one, uh, in expectation there are, uh, there are, Uh, so let's go back to this, this dynamic. Suppose we have this dynamic, <laughs> then uh, probability as, as, as two B is equal to one is, is because of this, uh, is half plus something like this. Again, this, this denominator is standard deviation and uh, this uh, numerator is this number. The, the. So, uh, the probability becomes half plus uh, this number is p times n to the one half. So, uh, so the probability is substantially bigger than half here. Because the expectation is linear uh, uh, using this fact, uh, we can we can uh, conclude that in the expectation there are these many more red vertices in B. 
So because there are uh, n vertices, uh, just uh, I multiple, multiple, multiply n by this one. So assuming uh, p p is small enough, uh, we can get this one. Then uh, it is need to show that the variance after day two is small enough too. So if p gets small, then uh, variance uh, computing variance after one day is not uh, extremely difficult, but uh, it's not bit small enough either. So if p is smaller, then uh, computing variance is easier, but we have to consider uh, uh, result uh, the dynamic after day two is so that it's more complicated. So if we consider variance after day two, then variance becomes uh, bigger. But p is small. If p is small, then we can manage to compute uh, this one, this variance. So uh, that's what we have done. So we have done. Uh, we we can we can estimate the variance uh, very carefully uh, and manage to bound uh, the variance small enough and it works for 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 this this p with extra law. Okay, so I will introduce now uh, ingredient uh, proof. Uh, it's not even sketchy of the proof. I just uh, tell you uh, what uh, theorems I have used, bounds uh, I have used, or we have used, I mean. So first of all, uh, typical channel of bound, uh, this is typical thing, it's uh, the independent variable variables, and then uh, we can just uh, use this kind of exponentially small bound of upper, upper tail and uh, lower tail. So this is not extremely typical to prove. And for general PI, so it's, it's, uh, uh, it's uh, this PI is not fixed. It depends on I, PI can be something different. I mean, quite different. So uh, uh, using if PI is all half, then it's, it's much easier, but uh, uh, we need uh, uh, channel bound for uh, this kind of inhomogeneous case. For so this in, inhomogeneous case, we have upper tail this small, lower tail is this small. So notice that uh, in upper tail, we have extra 2t two minus 2t two over 3 here. So this is the, uh, I, I don't think we can avoid this one. So for upper tail, so there is some, something like this always. If P is half, then we can avoid this one, maybe. But uh, if uh, the, this is inhomogeneous, then uh, we need this. And proof is not difficult, though it's not easy either. Uh, another uh, good thing we have is very asin uh, inequality. So I hope you 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 remember the central limit theorem. Central limit theorem is this: for iid random variable x i and divide by its variance, and then on the sum condition on x i, uh, this probability becomes uh, Gaussian distribution. The condition is a little bit complicated, but uh, there are many, this is general one, so that's why it's complicated. But for plus minus one random variable, we can we can have this kind of central, central limit theorem. But very, very asin inequality is more than this uh, central limit theorem. Namely, uh, they give, uh, the inequality give bound of supremum of this uh, difference in terms of third moment. This is a uh, variance thing. So 
this is second, basically second moment. Rho i is here, which is the absolute third, third moment, moment. So if we know uh, absolute third moment of xi, then uh, we can also uh, uh, bound uh, the difference between this uh, central limit theorem. So that it tells uh, uh, convergence rate, bound for convergence rate. So this kind of thing uh, we can uh, we can use. So the uh, last one is is some uh, expand the property after data. So after so it's not over uh, even for after day two. So for uh, for uh, uh, to analyze uh, day three, day four, day four, etc we have to use some uh, uh, expand the property. And so here is one uh, uh, notation of jumbled, uh, which is it's, uh, a kind of uh, expand the property. So, uh, but I'm not gonna define this one. So we, we can use uh, this kind of uh, uh, expand the property uh, and prove, prove after day two. So this uh, jumbled graph uh, thing is uh, Benny Sudakov worked on this this uh, graph with Michael Kriblevich, and then they they have nice result. So we 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 also use their result, and so to prove uh, uh, things after they uh, they two. Okay, so my I I. I will use the rest of my time for the questions. Let's first thank you. Thank you. So if you have uh, questions, uh, feel free to unmute yourself. Uh, yeah. I have only uh, some problem to hear your voice, so please say uh, loudly, then that will help. Maybe I'll start with a question. So is it possible to continue this analysis, say after day three, if you can see how much uh, red vertices is more than blue, it, then you can improve this bound on the probability by computing the variance. So you mean day three analysis? Oh, that's a good question, actually. So uh, to be honest, uh, we had hard time to analyze this thing, this dynamics, uh, even for day two. So day three is much more complicated and there are some strong dependency even for small p. So I hope I, I, I'm able to, to analyze uh, this dynamic after day three, but uh, I'm, I don't think it, it's, uh, it's possible for, for another six months. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> so it, it's quite, quite difficult. So you, you need substantially good idea to analyze day three. Even for day two, the, the computational variance is quite com complicated, very complicated. So in this work, so the outcome of day one eventually become determined the majority color, right? Yes, it's, it's imagine, uh, yeah. uh, so, could you say your question again? I, I, yes, may so be... I, didn't, I, I didn't just say question, but I wonder whether this is a common feature in the similar game. Uh, so you have this uh, GMP, maybe you, you work on the random graph, right? Yeah. So if, if, like, can we define some kind of property instead of just random graphs, some property of graphs so that this majority, day one majority will eventually win? Oh, I see, I see. Is there any characteristic or some, some 
small, I mean, a group of, of graphs, uh, which implies uh, the same result as, as a random graph. Right. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's good. Uh, so uh, for random graph, it's, it's uh, slightly easier, still hard, but slightly easier to analyze uh, expectation and uh, variance, but uh, without this randomness, uh, we need very uh, complicated idea, I think. So, so we have to use, use the structure uh, of graph itself. Then uh, if there is some structures, that's good, but uh, how to use them is another, another uh, problem. And uh, it, I will think about that, but uh, it's something like random or some expander property uh, may work. I will think about it. Thank you. You're welcome. So anyone else have uh, questions? <laughs> If not, then we can thank the. Thank you.